defensiveness. I am guessing that you have struggled, you are struggling, you will struggle again with feeling defensive. And so today I wanna to talk to you about what this is all about, why we get defensive, and what we can do about this one and start turning the tables so that we don't have to be living in that frustration, in that tension, and even in a lot of the conflict that defensiveness can cause unnecessarily. If you're new to me, and this is the first time we're connecting, my name is Julia Christina, and I'm a registered clinical therapist, a researcher, a coach, and an online course creator. I have a master's degree in counseling psychology, and I work to help heart-centered go-getter men and women break through worry, anxiety, and self-doubt so that they can get out of their heads get into their lives and love their lives. And whether being defensive, feeling defensive is something that you struggle with a lot of the time, or if it's something that just comes up for you and every once in a while, you and I both know it doesn't feel good. Because essentially when we are feeling defensive, it is because we are feeling offended that someone has done or said something that we, has we have taken offense to, and now we are feeling the need to defend ourselves. So we're gonna talk today about three of the biggest reasons why we get defensive and some mindset shifts that we can have right here that I'm gonna teach you that can really change the game on this one and keep yourself, start, start working towards keeping yourself from being quite as defensive, defensive quite as often. And the first reason, and probably the biggest reason by why we often get really defensive is because somebody has judged or criticized us and we don't like that view that they have of us. We don't like that opinion that they have and they want, we wanna change their mind. We wanna tell them why they are misled or mistaken and we oftentimes don't go about it in the most kind of respectful way. We usually get angry or we get you know offensive back towards them. We, try, we maybe even call names or we say things to them to try and get them to change their minds. Usually not all that productive, all that, all that doesn't really work all that well, but essentially we are getting so worked up because we can't stand someone having an opinion of us that we don't like. And so what do we do about this one? How do we flip the script on this? Well, one of the things that we can do is really get curious and ask ourselves, why do I need someone to see me a certain way? Why do I need someone to have an, a certain opinion of me in order for me to be okay? If I know myself, if I know who I am, and if what they're saying is not consistent or congruent with that, then what is there to defend? They're allowed to have their opinion. And maybe if it's something that needs to be worked out or worked through, we can have a conversation and you can explain yourself. And maybe if there is a misunderstanding, you can talk it through, but getting all defensive about it doesn't really help anything and it doesn't really lead anywhere. So really getting clear and asking yourself, what am I trying to defend here? And why do I need that person to see me a certain way? If I know who I am, that's really all that matters. The second reason why we get defensive, and this one is usually a lot more ego-based, is that we want to be right. And maybe this comes about if someone shares a perspective or an idea that we don't agree with and we get really defensive, we get angry, we don't like it, and so we just, we want to be right. We wanna show them that we are right and that they are wrong. And so we need to defend our point of view, we need to defend our perspective, we need to <laughs> die on that mountain because we want to be right. And there's a really great, great quote, and I can't remember who it's by, but it basically says, do you wanna be right? or do you wanna be happy? And so letting go a little bit of our ego and our need to be right and deciding which mountains we wanna die on, which fights do we wanna to have to the bitter end? Does it matter if somebody sees things differently than us? The first one was about, does it matter if somebody sees us the way that we don't want them to see us? And then the second one is, does it matter if somebody has a different idea about whatever it is, world events, politics, religion, whatever, whoever, like whatever. 
Do I want to be right or do I want to be happy? Is this a mountain I want to die on? Can I let somebody else have an opinion even if I totally disagree with it? Does it matter? Is this something that I want to get pulled into? Is this a fight that I need to have? Is this a conversation that I need to get involved in? Is it going to be productive? Is it going to be helpful? Is it going to get us anywhere? And if the answer is no, then it's time to shut her down. And the third reason why we often get defensive, and this one comes from a little bit of a softer place, a little bit of a gentler place, and it's because we want people to be on the same page as us. We want to feel understood. We want to feel connected. We want to feel like people really understand us. And if we are making a choice or we have an idea and we really want people to be in agreement with us, we might get defensive. We might try and defend our choices. We might try and defend our point of view. We might try and defend what we think or feel or have to say. But even when it comes to this one, even if it, when it comes to wanting to feel understood, to wanting to feel like we're on the same page, we have to ask ourselves, do I need other people's permission or approval to do or think or feel what I need to do or think or feel? Do I need other people's approval or permission? And the answer is no. That your ideas, your beliefs, your perspectives, your opinions, your, your needs, your goals are your goals. Your dreams are your dreams. And other people don't have to understand them. They don't have to get them and they don't even always have to support them in order for you to be able to go for it, to do that, to think that, to feel that. And so really just getting in there and asking yourself, do I really need other people's approval or permission? And spoiler alert, the answer is no. So learning how to not let our mind and our emotions and these ideas and these thoughts about how things need to be or how people need to be or how people need to treat us or whatever it is, not letting those things rule our lives and hijack our well-being and really getting in there and throwing us off. If this is something that you want to kind of dive deeper into and learn more about, I have a wait list for my breakthrough coaching program. You can find out more information. It's a deep dive. Uh, it's, it's, it's a longer term, small group, live coaching, coaching program. We're going to be really getting into this stuff in a deep and, and, and breakthrough and life shifting way. I'm going to put the link to the waitlist page below this. It's got some more information on there. You can hop on there, like the video, share it out. Let me know which one of these stood out most for you. Which one of these do you notice yourself getting... In which of these, like where does defensiveness come up for you most often? And what shift did you have by watching this video? Thanks so much for being here. It is always so good to connect with you and I love hearing your thoughts and comments in, this, in the comment section so that we can have more of a dialogue and it's not just me talking to you, I get to hear from you. Until next time, take good care.